Welcome back. With all these UAPs flying around overhead, and now the UK government actually having a War Department meeting about the meaning of things in their airspace. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> to be honest, it's driving me crazy. Look at the big picture. There's one very obvious aspect of all these things seen in the sky which somehow is being ignored. The popular press are going crazy about Chinese surveillance. The UFO community are going crazy about aliens. Let's get it together and actually look at one big fact we're ignoring. And that is the UAPs are all going from west to east. So what does that mean, crazy Professor Simon? Well, I'm not too crazy about this. This might be the answer. The jet stream. The first indications of this phenomenon came from an American professor, Elias Loomis, in the 1800s, when he proposed a powerful air current in the upper air blowing west to east across the United States as an explanation for the behavior of major storms. In 1883, after the eruption of Krakatoa, weather watchers tracked and mapped the effects on the sky over several years. They labeled the phenomenon the equatorial smoke stream. But it was in the 1920s, a Japanese meteorologist, Wasubu Uishu, detected the jet stream from a site near Mount Fuji. He launched balloons, pie balls, and watched them as they rose up into the Japanese sky. They all tracked from west to east, some of them crossing the entire Pacific Ocean. But here's a fantastic twist to that story. His research was ignored because he published it to the world in Esperanto. Side note, Esperanto was a great idea for a universal world language. Forget Japanese, Chinese, English and French. Let's just speak in Esperanto. Well, it didn't work, and nobody read his work. Until it was picked up by Germany. Heinrich Seelkopf. He came up with the term jet current. Well, Strahlenströmmen. I can't really speak his German. The jet stream. But the first people to use the jet stream as a weapon was the Japanese when they launched these Japanese balloon bombs. They crossed the Pacific Ocean from Japan to Oregon, where they fell into the forest, setting the USA ablaze. Well, they didn't really work. Sadly, some people were killed when they found one and it exploded, but it was a bit of a flop. And it was really lucky it didn't work because Japan had the biggest biological and chemical warfare factories in the world. And they were proposing to drop enough anthrax on the US to kill the nation. But it was forbidden by the Emperor of Japan. So what the F's going on today? They are probably balloons. There's none in Western Europe. They're all crossing the Pacific from West to east. And an interesting theory is that they could genuinely be weather balloons and not spy balloons. The world is facing a massive crisis. Uh, not from an alien invasion, but from climate change. The Arctic is melting. Ice floating on the open ocean might disappear, but it might also open up a trade route from the east to the west, something that China 
would exploit. And that might just be the answer that they're genuine weather balloons. I think they're probably spy balloons. So here's another big question. But this question is for you. Why would you use a balloon when you have a satellite? I think the only answer to that is because a balloon is in our atmosphere. It's doing something that needs air around it, like for buoyancy or for dropping something. The story is developing hour by hour. When I see a craft going against the wind, I might think it's slightly more interesting than a balloon. The truth is still out there.